Hello, I'm Monterey Jack of All Trades. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're diving deep into a question that's been bubbling up in the gaming world. What exactly makes an indie game an indie game? We're going to be using the charming underwater adventure Day of the Diver as our diving buddy to explore this murky topic. I hope you like puns. Indie games often have a lot of heart, passion, and creativity because the developers have complete control. They're not usually aiming for blockbuster status, but rather creating something unique and personal. This independence can lead to some really innovative and memorable gaming experiences. Traditionally, indie games are made by small independent developers. Think a couple of passionate folks with a dream and a whole lot of pizza. They don't have the massive resources that big studios like EA or Ubisoft have. For example, the team behind Stardew Valley was just one guy, Eric Barone, who worked on the game for four and a half years. But Dave the Diver is developed by Mint Rocket, a subsidiary of Nexon, which is a pretty big company. Despite this, Dave the Diver has that indie vibe. Why? Well, sometimes the size of the team working on the game is more important than the size of the parent company. If the team is small and operates with creative freedom, we can still get at that creative indie spirit. In fact, there are plenty of games out there developed by small teams within larger companies that feel very indie. It's all about how the project is managed and the level of creative control the team has. If they're given the freedom to experiment and innovate without too much corporate oversight, the end result can still be very indie. Indie studios are getting bigger. Some are even getting acquired by larger studios. So size alone might not be the best indicator of indie anymore. Maybe awards are the answer. Dave the Diver even got nominated for an Indie Game of the Year award, right? That settles it. These awards are important because they recognize the unique qualities that make indie games special. They often highlight games that might not have massive budgets, but excel in storytelling, innovation, or artistic direction. Winning or even being nominated for these awards can solidify a game's indie status in the eyes of the gaming community. Award categories can be tricky. There's a lot of debate about what truly qualifies as indie for these awards. Plus, some bigger studios might sneak into indie categories, blurring the lines a bit. Let's talk visuals. Indie games often rock a unique artistic style. Look at games like Celeste or Hollow Knight. Their art styles are memorable and set them apart. Dave the Diver sports a charming pixel art style that immediately gives off indie vibes. It's nostalgic, detailed, and has that handcrafted feel that we associate with indie titles. The art style can be a huge part of a game's identity, helping it stand out in a crowded market and creating a lasting impression on players. But stunning visuals aren't exclusive to indie devs. Big studios can have amazing art styles too. So while art can definitely provide that indie feel, it's definitely not a definitive factor. Let's not forget complexity and innovation in gameplay. Indie games often focus on unique and innovative gameplay mechanics, rather than cutting edge graphics or vast open worlds. They might have simpler graphics, but they offer deep and engaging gameplay experiences. Dave the Diver has a mix of underwater exploration and restaurant management, which is a unique combination. It's offering something fresh and engaging, which is the hallmark of indie games. The gameplay mechanics are often where indie games truly shine, offering experiences you won't find anywhere else. But complexity isn't black and white. There are plenty of complex indie games out there, believe me, I've played them, and some big budget games can be surprisingly simple. So what truly defines an indie game? It seems the answer might not be so clear cut. Size, awards, art style, complexity, they all play a role, but they're not the only pieces of the puzzle. Maybe the real heart of indie lies in the spirit of the game. Is it a creative passion project with a unique voice? Does it feel independent and innovative? In that sense, Dave the Diver captures that indie spirit, even with its bigger studio backing. You look at the cutscenes, the art style, the dialogue, they're all written and crafted passionately. Maybe that's it. Passion. Does it feel like someone cared when they were making the game? This isn't to say that larger dev teams lack passion or don't care, or that passionate people don't work super hard on a AAA title. Just that, with some games, that passion can fail to translate to the player, indie or not. So, what do you think makes an indie game an indie game? Let us know in the comments below. And if you liked this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more of these kinds of videos, subscribe to the channel. It's completely free, and it really helps me out. I'm Monterey Jack of All Trades. Until next time.